morning. It's a beautiful day in Reykjavik. Perfect for exploring. We're gonna see all the popular sites and try all the essential foods. So come along with us and let's discover Reykjavik. Behind us is Broad & Co. It's a very popular bakery here in Reykjavik and we have been dying to try it and there's a line out the door. We made quite the haul at Broad & Co. First thing we got was this big cookie here. Not sure what's in it, but it looks amazing. And some type of puff pastry thing that has a custard and it looks like raspberries on top. And a little loaf of bread. So we're gonna try them. I'm sure they're good. Well. <laughs> Pretty good. <clears throat> Tastes like molasses or something. Mm. Good. I don't know if I'd call this a molasses cookie. It almost tastes like a base of a regular chocolate chip with a little bit of molasses. And I think there's like cream cheese and chocolate in it too. I don't know. I've never had a cookie like this before. But it's good. Okay, I'm gonna try the puff pastry. This is the thing I'm most excited for. That's some good lamination in those layers. Very good. I need to get into the custard though. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of like a custardy thing. And then raspberries on top. And it's very good. The quality of the dough is Again. No more description. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bread pretty good. We're gonna save the rest of it for our ham and cheese later. We also stopped at Reykjavik Roasters, which is right behind us, and we got a mocha coffee, and it was really good. The whipped cream they had on top was nice, and Matt got a pour over. Uh, it was very, very fruity flavor. I did not like it, but Matt did. Behind me here is Hall Creams Kirkja. It's the largest church in all of Iceland and one of the tallest buildings in the country. And that's what you could hear all the church, the bells going off earlier in the videos was from this church. And you can see the design of it is very interesting. It's supposed to mirror the basalt columns that you see at some of the waterfalls in the one beach we were at. And it's a very iconic staple here in Reykjavik. So the church is currently closed because it's a Sunday so they're 
having church service in there so maybe later we'll come back around to actually see the inside but another interesting thing with the church you can actually pay it's a small price I think like around seven dollars and you can go to the top of the church on an elevator and see a viewpoint of all of Reykjavik. So behind me here now is the Harpa Concert Hall. It's where all, you know, the performances happen, all the big events. And the structure of it's really neat because it's supposed to like reflect the iceberg. And I heard from the inside, the windows look pretty crazy. But I don't think we're going to go inside. I don't think it's actually open at this time, but you can go inside. I think they have a souvenir shop and stuff in there. So this hobby and tradition dates back a long, long time ago. So it's called Karen's and it's the art of stacking rocks to make little stone piles to mark the paths. Our next stop is the Sun Voyager, which is a steel structure that's supposed to represent a Viking longship that greets you coming into Reykjavik. Icelanders love their hot dogs and we stopped at probably the most famous hot dog stand in Reykjavik. So we got everything on it and we'll see if it's better than the gas station one. Hot dog has a nice snap to it. <laughs> it's pretty good. Better than the gas station. My hands are getting pretty messy, but they have like three different types of sauces on it. And all their hot dogs, they put fried onions on and or raw onions, but this has both. So that's what you can expect on your hot dog. They have public fill up stations for your water too. Nice. We did some quick souvenir shopping. We went to Ice Mart, and if you go there and sign up for their membership club, you get a free pair of socks. And that's all. Membership's free, it's just the email newsletter. Yeah, that's where we saw the kitty. I love the kitty so much. We're at Cafe Loki now. They're well known for their rye bread ice cream. And they also have fermented shark here, but we know we're not gonna like it, so we didn't get that. So we're gonna try the rye bread ice cream now. It has a rhubarb sauce on top of it. Look at the tiny spoons. Wow. Kind of, I don't know if anyone's ever had grape nut ice cream, but it almost tastes like grape nut ice cream take a cereal that they soak and put in ice cream. That's what it reminds me of. The church is open now, so we're gonna go take a look inside.
Reykjavik is a pretty fun little city. There really isn't that much to do here. There's a good bit of museums, a lot of different food places to try, but I would say you only really need one day for Reykjavik. I wouldn't spend any longer. That pretty much ends our Reykjavik tour. We saw all the popular sites and we tried a good bit of food, but you know, I don't know. We might try more tonight. We'll see. Um, other than that, we're done with Reykjavik. We still have a good bit of time for the day, so we're gonna make up and see the one site we wanted to see yesterday, but didn't feel up to it, and that is Fingvalur National Park. It's the only UNESCO World Heritage Site in Iceland, and yeah, we'll tell you more about it when we're there. So we made it to Thingvalur National Park. As I said before, it's Iceland's only UNESCO World Heritage Site. And what's significant about Thingvalur is from 9th century to late 17th century, this is where Iceland's parliament meant and all the big decisions happened and also the spot of lots of like gruesome beheadings and hangings and stuff because this is where they're making decisions and doing trials and stuff so we're gonna be seeing some of that I guess and seeing where they originally met so we're gonna walk back to Logberg which is called the Law Rock um, so when the Icelandic uh, council met here there's a rock up here where they would uh, proclaim the laws I guess there was a law speaker uh, and they were chosen for a three-year term. Um, and at, at Logberg, anybody could step forward. Speeches were given about important matters and news was reported of significant events. So pretty interesting. We're gonna see what this looks like. Um, yes, I have a law I would like to make and put in place <laughs> and this is this is the place to do it. Um, the law is that everyone is required to have at least one cat and give them a home. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I just think these images put it in better perspective of what it actually looked like. You can see here is the rock and the hill we're standing on now is where everyone would stand and listen. And there's some more images over here of what it looked like. And then what I found interesting, they have all the law speakers from the start until the end. Now you see all this beautiful moss behind me. Yeah, well, don't step on it, okay? Because moss takes 70 years to grow, give or take. So don't hurt the beauty. Let the moss flourish and live. Right in this area is the Thingvalur church, which was over there, and then behind me is the Prime Minister's summer residence. It was built in 1930, 
and then over here on this side across the way from the summer residence is the Icelandic National Cemetery where two Icelandic national poets are buried as well as some other people. One thing that may be confusing for English speakers is this first letter here. <clears throat> it looks like it might be a P. Uh, that letter is actually uh, sounded out like TH and the. <clears throat> so this isn't Pingvalor, it's actually Thingvalor. So that's a common thing you'll see in Icelandic language. You'll see they have their own alphabet, so a lot of these different letters are pronounced differently than you would think. That's all we've really seen of Thingvalor. There's a lot more here to go around and see, but everything is so spread out and we've already seen a lot on our trip and we don't really think this adds too much. It's really not much to look at compared to other things we've seen, but it's good to know this is where a lot of things happened and at least we got to see a little bit of it. Last stop for the night was Om Nom Chocolate. The presentation at this place is amazing. It's so cute. We can't recommend it enough. And both of the this cost, it's the medium size. It costs about like eight dollars. And I think for the quality and presentation of it, it's so worth it. Mine was the Swan. They have like little waffle crisp pieces, a macaron, um, some type of granola that I think is like toffee sea salt and a passion fruit sauce on it, I believe. So I got this sheep from Om Nom and it has almond butter and toasted peanuts and a chocolate bar. Mmm. There's a toffee granola on top. It has a nice crunch and that passion fruit sauce is really really refreshing and surprisingly these complement each other really well I wasn't sure how all these things were gonna go together but really good I'm gonna take a bite of the wing too while I'm at it <clears throat> decent waffle crisp in the macaron hmm I don't know what the inside it is I think it has passion fruit in it and chocolate on the filling. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely passion fruit and something. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy this though. I recommend you stop at Om Nom if you're in Reykjavik. It's our last morning in Iceland. If you can't tell, we're tired because it's early. And we're on route to drop off our handy dandy rental car that served us so well and I was wondering do you have any last thoughts reviews it's a beautiful country I highly recommend visiting if you do visit respect the moss respect the environment and have fun as Smokey the Bear said only you can prevent wildfires. So protect the environment. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just I'm just proud of us. This was our first international trip and I feel like we accomplished a lot and saw a lot. I mean, we dr we drove the whole ring road. We drove around the whole country really in 6 days. So that's pretty crazy. And I think we should be proud. Okay, next we'll be dropping off Freya, our car. So see you there. Goodbye, Freya. We'll miss you. You served us well, little hybrid car. We're in the airport now waiting to board. I want to say thank you for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from them. And thanks for joining on this adventure. We hope to 
have many more adventures in the future and hopefully another international trip coming up soon. So thanks for joining us on this one and we hope we'll see you guys soon.